Nice to be back in Leeds. I, uh, I almost mean that. <laughs> I did, did a gig in Darlington just before Christmas, and I said, oh, it's nice to be back in Darlington. And they all just looked at me really weird. <laughs> but, um, no one's ever said that before. <laughs> well, nice to be here. Thanks for coming out. This would be fucking terrible without you. <laughs> <laughs> Might be terrible with you, very much depends on me, I suppose. <laughs> I do appreciate you coming out, because uh, if I wasn't doing this, I wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> it's nothing personal, nothing about this place or anything. It's just, I would quite happily hibernate from November till the end of January, beginning of May. <laughs> I just know because I'm antisocial and miserable, and I, I don't like celebrating Christmas, New Year, my birthday, my wedding anniversary. Uh, I am all of those things, but it's not because of that. It's because I actually suffer from uh, seasonal affective disorder, mm. uh, which if you don't know what that is, it's like the Asda Smart Price version of a mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> she just makes you miserable. I'm 48, I live in Hull. <laughs> fucking nice! <laughs> Go down Asda on a Saturday afternoon, it's fucking nice. But it's not hard. It's not a proper mental illness. If you've got some like, you know, ADHD or obsessive compulsive disorder, those sort of things can destroy your life, uh, stop you leaving your house. Uh, your house will be spotless, but <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's unfair of them to call it OCD, though, because uh, it's not alphabetical order, is it? Drives <laughs> 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 you mental, isn't it? But yeah, if you've got a proper mental illness, you can get uh, treatment and uh, therapy and drugs and things. If you've got a seasonal affective disorder, you know the treatment is for that? Light. <laughs> 200 quid for a box with a bulb in. <laughs> Sorry, man, I've got a torch on. <laughs> so I do this, this is my therapy, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I think driving around Yorkshire at night and hanging around in slightly dark rooms is going to be good for me. <laughs> it's not, man. Really. So I do comedy, been doing comedy for a couple of years. I started, when I started doing comedy, I was in a group with some other comedians, but I left flat uh, due to what we're classing as comical differences. Uh, they didn't think I was funny. It's <laughs> so fine, because I thought, they were cunts. <laughs> I didn't want to left the group and said, oh, that, you've left the group, that makes you like Robbie Williams. I don't think he fucking knows. Because <laughs> when Robbie left Take That, he did a shitload of coke, he signed a multi-million dollar record deal, and played in front of tens of thousands of people at Nebworth. I haven't done a shitload of coke. I haven't signed a multi-million dollar record deal. My total earnings of comedy, as of this morning, £513.50. <laughs> Which also explains why I haven't done the shitload of coke I mentioned now. <laughs> and I haven't played to tens of thousand people at Nebworth. I did want to play to two men and a dog. <laughs> Just outside Barnsley. <laughs> it was a good audience, that. <laughs> Apart from the two men. <laughs> but yeah, comedy's been doing all right. I know what you're all thinking. Uh, we've not seen you on Live at the Apollo. <laughs> There's a good reason you've not seen me on Live at the Apollo. Yeah. I've not been on it. <laughs> uh, the reason I've not been on it is I, I'm banned from the BBC. I, I got banned for swearing. Uh, I was on Pointless. The question was, name a famous fictional vampire. Oh, vampire's a fictional dickhead. <laughs> That was my first one. <laughs> I didn't want to say the obvious ones like Dracula or that one from the Twiglet films. Uh, so I said, the one from Sesame Street. 100 points. 
He said, he doesn't count. I said, I think you'll find. <laughs> That's all he fucking does. <laughs> <laughs> so before I did comedy, uh, I used to work in uh, the porn industry. Really? Yeah. Did they like me calling it that? <laughs> We're not the porn industry. We make all of the chess pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that job, it was a good job, but uh, pretty easy. Uh, you had your board, you had your pieces, you had your instructions. It was all very black and white. <laughs> well, growing up, that was fucking worse, can we? <laughs> but yeah, the thing I didn't like about it is uh, you had to wear shifts. It's like one week you'd be on days making rooks, and then the next week you'd be on nights. You <laughs> 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 won't, yeah? yeah? I wrote a book. I wrote a medical book. Uh, the Giant Book of the Human Body. Uh, 660 pages, uh, 667 if you include the appendix. <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to do a load of book jokes, uh, but they were they were quite clever, and some of my audiences didn't get it. So, uh, and then one night in Wakefield, I had to explain what a book was. <laughs> Two hours, I'm not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> my ambition, my big ambition when I was younger, I wanted to be uh, Britain's tallest weatherman. I, I auditioned, got to the last two. Uh, the other guy was six foot seven. He stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I used to work at uh, Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Any of you ever been? Fantastic. Uh, it's the animals in their natural environment. Just outside Doncaster. <laughs> a couple of years ago, two lions and a monkey escaped into Doncaster. But, uh, the lions thought it was a bit rough, so they went back. <laughs> the monkey's now working behind the bar in uh, Weatherspoons. <laughs> Doing very well. <laughs> but I, got I got sacked from there. Uh, I, I was the vet. Uh, I did apply to be the head vet, but apparently you had to treat the rest of the animal as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got sacked from those. He said I didn't know if one of the animals was pregnant. I did. Uh, I just didn't fancy dealing with the elephant in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the reason I had all these different jobs is that I didn't really have a strong sort of role model from my dad. My dad always kept us in the dark with what he did for him. So maybe he was a spy or secret agent. Just a really bad electrician. I've got a fan. I'll give time. Fuck. So yeah, anyway, thanks for coming out. <laughs> uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, my name's Mike Linwood. If you've not enjoyed it, uh, my name's Amal Pulsin. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> My doctor came to see me once. Yeah, he, he left me a review. Please, please, please get better soon. <laughs> yeah, if you've not enjoyed it, just uh, you know, give it to yourself. It's no white of grass. Okay? <laughs> but uh, there's one there. What promoter said to me once, he said, uh, when you do comedy, if you can just make one person laugh, one person smile, improve one person's day, then you shit, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll carry on. Uh, like most comedians, my ambition is to make it famous. Uh, I want to be massively successful. I want to play the O2. Uh, just one night walk out there, finish my set. The audience stands, massive stand ovation. I can just stand there in the spot, finally be happy, finally achieve my goal. Getting free light therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Enjoy the rest of your night. Guys, <laughs> hey, give it up once more for Mike Blue.